Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I am Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is um, what it takes for a restaurant to succeed. And I guess it's going to be part of my 50mistakes.com, which is a website that I've devoted to helping other restaurants. It's 50 mistakes that restaurant owners make. There's uh, 50 short, 50 plus three minute short videos on there that just give my experience over the last 10 years of mistakes that I've made. Things that are simple to fix. Really, a lot of the stuff is really simple. So, somebody asked me, Marcus, have you seen that show, Restaurant Impossible? And I was like, yeah, I, I really like that. Um, that show, Restaurant Impossible. So, the chef on there, Robert, he goes around and finds f extremely failing restaurants that submit themselves to the show. And he goes in and basically tears the place apart, eats the food, um, and then, you know, decides that everything is crap, which if you see these places, these places are a lot of them, you just, just like, oh my gosh, these places do need help. So I guess their, their success at screening the applicants works very well. Um, we just watched one the other day, Jamie, with that Melissa's in Western Pennsylvania. Yeah. Remember that one? Yes. Where the husband and wife just bought it on a whim. They had no they just, idea. Yeah, they had never worked in a restaurant. They never, never worked. Yeah. Just never drove by, saw it for sale made a bid on it a week later they, they owned they this restaurant for an investment property I think is right what they said. he was a contractor she had never been they'd never been in the restaurant industry and she ended up being the chef of this place and it was a disaster and I felt really bad for them felt really bad so the chef comes in and totally you know tears apart the building inside guts you know not guts it but they take ten thousand dollars and redoes renovates the whole inside and then meets with the people in the back of the kitchen and creates a new menu and this and that and all of a sudden an hour later you have this successful restaurant it appears and, and uh robert irvine robert irvine yep yeah, robert and uh it's a really cool how it all takes place and happens and goes down i gotta be honest with you there's a lot more than just good food and a pretty place that makes a restaurant successful, right, Jamie? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> First off, you know, just to be able to, you know, he, he mentions finances sometimes. You know, he'll mention to people, let me see your P&Ls. You know, how much money do you bring in a month? I mean, there's really specific questions that go much further than just looking at a P&L. And that's a good start. But you have to know, you know, your ideal food costs, your real food costs. You have to price everything out. I mean. As owning my own restaurant here, I know that if I take a pound and a half of eggplant and I slice it up, cook it, and at the end of it, I'm only going to yield a pound point one five. See, I know that, and I know that so much point three seven of a pound equals a half a cup. So when I price out a menu for a half a cup of eggplant, I know my exact cost based upon the last price paid, the average price paid of eggplant, or the highest price paid of eggplant. I have to work that into an equation, and you just can't pull these numbers out of thin air. You just can't write a menu and say, oh, I think I should charge $16 for this chicken dish. No, you. the restaurant industry is probably the only industry where people don't understand their cost to put it on the plate. You never go into a clothing store. The clothing store owner thinks, oh, gee, this jacket looks great. I think I could sell it for $199 or $59. No, they know I paid 39 bucks for this. This is what it is. If I pay 39 bucks, I'm going to charge 125 They know that. Clothing stores know that. Jewelry stores know that. Every business knows what their cost is to put the product to the consumer. Restaurants don't. It's a crapshoot. They think because the restaurant down the street is charging six bucks for soup that they can undercut them at five fifty or five dollars a soup. In reality, you have no idea what that restaurant that's doing selling the six dollar soup with their, with their food cost is, what their cost of goods. Cost of goods is the actual cost that for every dollar you give a restaurant, how much that dollar goes to the actual food cost, how much goes to the actual labor, how much goes to the staff. These are very important factors, and this is one thing this show is missing. I'm not sure if Robert is coaching them on the side of this or they get help with on the side of this. But just because you have a fancy looking place and a new menu and you're on a show doesn't mean that you're gonna run that you're gonna run a profitable restaurant. I have no idea the situation with a lot of these restaurants. I'm sure their business increased and that's great. But really we make money at my restaurant. The more diligent I am, the more money I make. So the more I understand my costs, the more money I'm gonna make. The more I run flash reports, the more I budget, the more I put an exact penny to the cost of everything in the restaurant, the more money I make. So it's a difference of sometimes making, just breaking even, 
or making, turning a profit of fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. Several years ago, um, when I really dove into the finances of my restaurant, I was able to shave off $79,000 in expenses over the course of one year. And that was not done by serving cheaper food, it was by understanding what the cost is of everything in the building. Okay, understanding my labor costs every week, understanding my food costs, understanding my liquor costs, understanding what the cost is to put that chicken on the plate, put the lobster on the plate, to put whatever on the plate. That's extremely important. Another element, Jamie, that they don't talk about on the show is how to advertise and market. Right. And we're firm believers of direct marketing. So when a customer walks in the door, a guest, when a guest walks in the door, how do you actually get that guest onto your email list? Into how do you your get that database? guest to return? How do you get the guest to return? And that's how you have to get them into your email list, get them into a membership with your restaurant, some kind of you know loyalty program, something like that. That's extremely important. You cannot just rely upon that guest walking in, having a great experience, and walking out and saying, oh, I'm gonna go back there. New restaurants open, uh, restaurants entice other customers, other guests away from other restaurants. People will switch. There's not much loyalty left in the restaurant industry. In any industry, there's not much loyalty left. You know, really, it's decided upon, you know, what's this What's this restaurant doing cool this week? What's the price on this? Uh, you know, this is a new restaurant. Let's go try it. You know, when a new restaurant opens, everybody goes and tries. And their first month is like their, usually their busiest month. And they're like their first year or two years because everybody has to go try this brand new restaurant. When I first opened 10 years ago, we were on Monday Night Lobster Night. We were serving like 40 lobsters on Monday Night Lobster Night because I was brand new. We were having something fun. I got to tell you, I haven't done 40 lobsters on a Monday night. I don't do that. You know, I haven't done that since back then because it's just, it was the, it was the, the thrill of being open and brand new. And honestly, I don't want to sell 40 lobsters because I don't make a lot of money on selling lobster at all. So I don't promote lobsters as much as I did when we first opened and that's what got people in the door. And if I knew what I knew back then, 10 years ago, I got all those people on my email list, direct marketed them and you know kept offering the meals. It wasn't until like three years into our restaurant that I actually realized the power of how do you capture people and get them back into the door with the least amount, of, spending the least amount of money. So it's great that Robert Armani is doing this. It's a great show, I love to watch it. I learn a lot of things, but just be wary that there is so much on the other side that has to be done to keep that restaurant from maintaining success down the road financially and to keep people coming in the door because I'm gonna say it again, good food, good service, and nice ambiance is not enough. It's a phenomenal start, but it's not enough. And uh, what do you think about uh, Restaurant Impossible? I think it's really cool. I, I, I like the chef and I'm gonna keep watching it. And uh, if you like this video, hit like, hit like, subscribe, pass it on. Check out my site, 50 Mistakes Restaurant Owners. 50 Mistakes Restaurant Owners Make, 50mistakes.com. Thanks for watching.